This is a partial replication of a magnetic motor design referred to as a perpetual mobile or motor by its inventor, though I tend to go my own way design-wise, and I've added a leverage bar and some other alterations. This is what the original design looked like. Really quickly, before I go into the details of the design and my thoughts on the original motor, if you haven't subscribed to my backup channel, you can get to it at the URL above. If anything of importance ever disappears off of this platform, look for it there. If you haven't already, visit my other YouTube channel that features interesting topics that wouldn't always fit the subject matter on this one. And for my more controversial videos, visit me at the URL above. So back to the Perpetuum Magnetic Motor. I've noticed three unsuccessful replication attempts at this device and one detailed analysis of it. One of the replications looks successful if you simply view the videos without reading the description associated with the video. I'll get to that shortly. This YouTuber does some of the best 3D animations of magnetic motor concepts I've seen. I enjoy his channel, though I often disagree with his conclusions. He tends to equate magnetic fields to gravity and momentum in his computer simulated comparisons, and they are completely different forces. Igor does some really great 3D printed builds of magnetic motors and gravity wheels. If you decide to make an attempt at building one of these yourself and wish to stay closer to the original design, he made his 3D models available for download. I'd swap the magnet out that he uses to flip the magnet on the stator and use a mechanism closer to the inventor's method simply because it will create drag his way. But other than that, his model is probably constructed better than the original motor. This YouTuber attempted to build a version that was horizontal rather than vertical. He documented his process through several videos before eventually setting the project aside. This replication appears to work, and the replicator even goes so far as to prove there are no wires hidden on his device or air hose, and he even disassembles and reassembles it on camera. However, if you translate his comments, he admits that he used a small pulse to get his motor to work. I don't see why he went to all the trouble of demonstrating that his device has no hidden gadgets when he admits that it has a hidden gadget. He also states that he's not trying to mislead anyone and simply wants to inspire other people to give it a try in hopes that someone will succeed in a replication. Part of the reason I went my own way on my version of the motor was because there are no successful replications of it. So doing what everybody else is doing would probably bring me the same results. This YouTuber appears to have tried the hardest out of everybody who's made an attempt. He states here, There were many unsuccessful attempts in these seven months. I bought more than 30 microwave magnets to choose four with the same weight, dimension, and magnetic intensity. I bought more than 50 small neodymium magnets of various sizes. Within my capacity, I tried all possible adjustments. Lost count of how many rods I broke trying to perfect adjustment. Weaken the small magnets in various intensities and nothing. Always the re-entry between the magnets breaked the wheel. So seeing that people had already devoted so much time to this, I saw no need to put myself through the same frustration, but rather to look at it as an engineering problem. I've experimented with levers in projects in the past and have recently been looking at pulleys as well. With the correct arrangement of pulleys, you could make 800 pounds worth of weight feel like 100 pounds or less. The trade-off is that you end up pulling the weight eight times as far to achieve this. So even my lightning fast mind can calculate that your net gain advantage zeroes out. Pulleys and levers give you a mechanical advantage, but you always give something up to achieve this in the increased distance you have to move an object to achieve the gain. Knowing that, I still thought it would be fun to experiment with this project. You never know, you could find yourself surprised. Regardless of the results though, I've always learned the most by doing my own experimentation, and the increased knowledge can be applied to future projects to save time or spark new ideas. This is some of the process I went through in putting mine together.
I 3D printed parts and then would toy with different ways to create the cycles of the original design with methods that might employ less drag or give some mechanical advantage. As I said, I looked at pulleys as one viable alternative to the original design and even 3D printed some of my own. I found that you'd probably need a bigger system to use them effectively as the light assist that you need to flip the stator magnet is offset by the added stress of pulling a string through the pulleys. So I went with a leverage bar instead. To properly implement the lever, I printed something to hold weights in order to balance it. I went with something I wouldn't have to purchase, as I'd already bought more items to put this project together than I had anticipated. It's difficult to say whether the original motor works or not, as the inventor could have easily hidden a device in the wooden base that houses his motor. He isn't pretending that his motor does anything more than lightly spin, though. It says there's no way you could get any useful energy out of this device and recommends solar or wind power to people interested in alternative energy sources. Whether it works or not though, you've got to admit it looks pretty cool. And now I have the base unit assembled with spare parts that I can pull out and experiment with any time a new idea occurs to me. For now though, I decided to set it aside as I have quite a few other projects that I want to work on. There were times in the past that I felt I'd exhausted most of the ideas I had to experiment with and would take breaks and do other things until inspiration returned. I've been experiencing exactly the opposite lately. I literally have nearly a dozen ideas for things I'd like to build or experiment with on my channel, some of which will have to wait simply because of the cost of buying supplies to build them. But others, I already have most of the supplies I need to put them together now and we'll get them finished whenever I have time. Should nothing serious impede my efforts, you can look forward to several new ideas coming out in the near future. Thanks for watching, and do great things.